Good morning, everybody. How are you? I'm Meredith Herrenbrook with Becoming Ridiculously Awesome. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. Uh-oh, we're not live yet. Good morning, everybody. How are you? I'm Meredith Herrenbrook with Living Your Awesome. I am trying to do more Facebook Lives. I think it's helpful. It's a good way to connect between you guys and myself. And you get to learn a little bit more about my daily challenges. I still have them. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Um, but I have a story to tell you. Um, in the midst of this whole COVID-19 seriousness, um, there are layers of extreme seriousness, and then there are layers of um, a little overreach for me, I think, with the government and so forth. Um, and I'll tell you why I feel this way is because I was, you know, the sun is shining finally for the past few days and just getting out and walking and doing a little bit more exercise after lots of stress eating last week. Um, I had my dog and we're walking down and mind you where I live is, um, it's the suburbs. It's very quiet and there are rules of when you're outside, please wear a face mask and so forth. I really think though they mean when you are in public near people, it's a kindness. I think it's something to, you know, everyone has to do their own thinking and, you know, be appropriate, but you should be considerate of other people. But what was happening was I was by myself and I have not seen another person. I had not been near anybody within probably a quarter of a mile. And there's this woman on her bike and she is in the bike lane. I'm on the sidewalk and she is going by me. She has her mask on and good for her. That's what she needs to do for herself. Wonderful. But I'm by myself and I have my mask just kind of on my wrist. So in case I'm near someone, I'll put it on just to be respectful and, and give that space. And so she, so I smile at her, you know, try and be neighborly. And she, um, she goes mask. And it took me a second to really realize what she was saying. And I go, wait, she shamed me, right? And I instantly got really, 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 really mad. And so I'm just giving you um, something that I was working through. And I got really mad that she shamed me. And I said, well, all right, she has her belief system. And we are all, of course, in this together and we're all working for a common goal to keep everyone safe and, you know, and so forth. And anyway, but regardless of what she was doing, because she has every right to do what she's doing and however, but it was my job to work on my reaction and or just direct action. And so I just I want to tell you what my process was in this, because it might be useful for you when someone shames you, gives you judgment, you can have a plethora of choices for yourself. You can go, I'm sad about what they said. I don't like what they said. I'm mad about what they said. Um, I'm furious about what they said. Um, I'm going to take action against that person. So forth and so on, right? So you can start with the lowest levels of consciousness of being apathetic. And then you can go into the action, being anger, you know, have the anger and I'm, you know, and so forth. But then what you can do is work through that. When someone's coming at you in judgment, you don't necessarily have to take that judgment at all onto yourself. You can look at it and choose what to bring into your world and how to act back, maybe not react, but take it in, swirl it about in front of you and not just take it in. I'm a total empath. I feel a lot. I'm very emotionally engaged more than I think I'm even conscious of. And so I take on other people's energies a lot, my husband's, my kids and so forth. And I have to self-manage myself. Everyone does in the workspace at home. But because I might be a little extra sensitive, I really have to be um, do a little bit more on how I act. And so this might be useful for you uh, if you are getting frustrated um, with someone. And 
if I can actually interrupt myself. If there is weird live stuff, I know my screen is glitching a little bit, so I'm hoping that it is um, it is streaming well for you. If it's not, please give me a little text or something. I will see it, and I'll try and maybe move my um, my screen closer. But I'm I'm doing this through my little AT and T fabulous um, hotspot here. Anyway, so what do we do when that energy comes at you? And, you know, I was judged and I'm like, how dare you judge me? I am not near anybody. Right. So I'm listing the you have no right to judge me, which they can do whatever they want. The whole world can do whatever it wants. Right. But how are we going to hold ourselves accountable for our own beliefs and actions and be present for ourselves and go, I see what you're thinking. I notice that. Thank you. Acknowledge it and go, thank you. Okay. The world is always our teacher through the good stuff, through the bad stuff all the time. So when you have that coming into you and when it came to me, I go, I instantly got anger. How dare you? Now, what do you do after that is, okay, thank them and go, all right, what's my own judgment here and so let's clear that judgment um within ourselves do we need to judge back do we have to have what's called righteous anger self-righteous anger i'm going to be angry because i'm going to be more powerful than you or i'm going to you know almost like goats on a hill right they always want to be the highest um we do that and it's a taught systemic um, behavior, right? And, you know, and we learn it growing up to be okay and safe in the world and safe in our families. And basically we do lots of our actions and reactions to be safe and loved and to not be wrong. No one wants to be wrong, right? Um, but we can always learn from it. So, um, so I want to pause for a moment because someone has written something beautiful here. Um, and I want to acknowledge that just remain. So it's about reacting prior to the thinking of a situation through. Um, so there's nothing, she's saying there's nothing at all to defend myself or react immediately and later wish I'd thought about my response first. Yes, it's and it's a practice. This is all a practice of being mindful and creating new neural pathways, you know, new train tracks of, okay, I used to act this way all the time of, getting mad instantly, but how do I want to act? What works for me more now that I'm older and a little wiser and can take that space? And so thank you so much for offering that, Mindy. I really appreciate it. Um, yes, life life is always teaching us. And if we don't get it one way and we have a quote, quote, mistake, I never really believe in mistakes. They're just actions or behaviors or experiences that we can learn from and move through or test us to go, oh, did I get that right? Have I ha successfully moved through that plateau of learning? You know, like being in first grade, second grade, you know, you learn rudimentary math of one plus one equals two, and then you get fancy and you go 10 plus 12 equals you know, 22 and so forth. And then you get to multiplications and division and all these, you know, calculus. So, when we are confronted with something that leaves us less than sparkly, right? We are all diamonds, as I say, we're all diamonds in the rough. And there are certain things that make us sparkle. There are certain things that we do that promote our sparkle and, and our greatness and our beauty and our passions. And of course we wanna live in that more often. So when we're confronted with something that we have an experience that we just, uh, crap, you know, didn't really do that so well. There's always time for reflection and trying again. The world will give you another opportunity. I promise you. Maybe it's next day. Maybe it's in one hour and you go, oh, okay, here it is again. How do I want to, I, now I see it. Now I notice, okay, now that's the energy. That's the experience. Got it. Okay. Let me try again. It's okay to try again. It's okay to apologize and go, ah, oh, you know what? I really wanted to behave this way, but it didn't really work out. This is what I was hoping to accomplish. 
Um, you know, and then you can work it out with that person or you can work it out with yourself. And if that person is long gone, like that woman on the bike, if you've been hearing this story th from the whole way, is that woman on the bike saying mask and I didn't have my mask on because there was nobody around to require it, in my humble opinion, or maybe not so humble, but it just seems logical. She is gone. Can't really chat with her about it but I can move that energy forward into the next situation. All we can do and all we always are doing is our best. That's all we can do is what am I going to do next time? How can I make this inside more cohesive, more present, more conscious um, and so forth to bring to the next step um, and the next situation. We will always be presented with the next level um, we will always be growing, we'll always be learning, we will always be challenged. And sometimes you'll, this, tell me if you have had this experience where in your world, you go, okay, ramping up and it's like a really steep climb of learning and the world just seems to be battering you down. What do you do? Like, you, have you experienced this where you are ramping up and everything is really, really hard and then you finally get the lesson and then the world kind of plateaus and you go, oh, awesome. Oh, okay. Got it. Now I don't have to learn that lesson anymore. I've learned all the little aspects of the lesson and now I can move through it and I have moved through it and then you're at a plateau and then you're singing and you're doing great and things are just a little easier and you're moving forward. And then soon enough, the world will say, okay, here's a new opportunity. Here's a new challenge. Here's something that maybe you could work through. And that is how I have experienced the world um, is that life will always give you opportunities and you will stay stuck at a level until you move through it. So if you are constantly battering against something, whatever it is, judgment of others, or um, maybe you're not getting promoted at work, or you're just, you know, write down a list of one or two or five things. What is, are you constantly hitting up against? And that's how I help people is I help them get through what they're stuck at and why sometimes we need someone objective to look at someone's situation is because we're really good because we've grown up in our world. There's so many filters and rules and beliefs that we've put out there that we don't even see anymore. It's like a second skin. So when someone like a life coach or another therapist or psychiatrist or, you know, or a friend at the bar who says, Hmm, I hear your story. Have you considered this? And, you know, offering new perspectives and challenges to your system. You go, well, do you have to believe that? Does it have to work that way and only that way? So we can't change the rest of the world when we are stuck. That would be really hard and um, it'll take you forever and it will never really work. Um, but we can shift our own belief systems and experiences so that when we are confronted with a new situation, we can meet that next situation in a better way. And then when we do that and we can become more conscious and aware of what our belief systems and actions are and move through them, then you're going to level up. Life will be easier. Um, if you're believing that the world is against you and you're not getting what you need and you're sad and frustrated with whatever it is based on traumas, hardships growing up, and all that that is created all that nurturing or lack thereof that's created the framework to survive the next moments and so but when we get older sometimes those old systems no longer work we have found a better way or we know that there is somehow a better way we just don't know what that is that's when an objective person is really useful to go hmm I see this is happening for you. I'm really sorry that's happening for you, but let's kind of move through it. So um, anyway, that's what I that's what I do. Um, wrote a book on it, Becoming Ridiculously Awesome. Who doesn't want that? Um, check it out on Amazon. Um, but uh, anyway, so that was my story today of dealing with that instant anger with that 
bicyclists coming by saying, basically, you should be wearing a mask when no one was there. Um, yeah, it was it was like, wow, do I need to feel anger? No, not necessarily. What was my belief systems about her judging me? What do I need to work on? The world's a mirror. It's always a mirror. Whenever we're pointing out there, we should really be pointing out there going, okay, what's my stuff in here? What's my beef with this? You know, um, you know, no matter how well versed you are in, you know, being peace, love and happiness, um, one, live with a room full of children, um, you know, live in an area where maybe you don't speak the language and so forth. There will always be things coming up where you'll have an interaction or you'll have a frustration and it's for, up to us to work through it and you know and and do what we can we can be frustrated you can totally choose that path every single time sure i it doesn't matter to me but if you are frustrated and no longer want to do that then you have to kind of do a little self-reflection go Hmm. Do I have to take that on in that way? What can I release within myself? So what I did was when I had judgment about that bicyclist, um, shaming me, I go, all right, I'm going to release my judgment of that person. Can she have her own beliefs and, and say what she wants? Absolutely. It is a free world. She didn't physically harm me. You know, there's no foul here. She voiced her opinion. It was up to me to take that and personify it and, and, and do whatever I needed to. And so my initial reaction was, I'm going to judge and I'm going to get mad at her because how dare she? Mm, okay, let's work on that. So I ended up consciously, this is what kind of the phrasing that I use is I consciously release judgments about myself. Did I make the right choice for myself? Yes, it seemed reasonable at the time. She wants to get in with it uh, with me later. Okay, fine, let's have a, a conscious, aware discussion. Breathe in, find my feet, find my balance. Did I do the best I could? Did I feel I made the right choice? Yes, okay. So what's what am I imparting onto the situation that you know we had this exchange? And so I release my judgments of myself. I release my judgments of her. And then I wish her well, you know, and, and clear all that, what that was um, already in me that created that judgment. Let's clear that out. Let's look at the imprint maybe and go, okay, where, where did I feel that I needed to have that reaction? Okay. Do I need to have that reaction anymore? No, maybe not. I could just go, ha, thank you so much. Let's move on. Okay. You know, there's no one around. I don't need to be angry about it. I hope that helps. If anyone has questions or comments about this, please, I would love for you guys to type. Um, you know, I am here. So what I'm going to be doing is, um, and please type you guys, do you guys want me to do a 20 minute video like every day what's the best time for you guys i think why i haven't been doing it is because of you know my schedule i have girls at home um putting them to bed at night is kind of tough for me um but i'm thinking i kind of like 8 30 in the morning but i don't know how much you guys are stay at home right now um and have you know bandwidth for you know having a little chat maybe at 8 30 or maybe near lunchtime um, evenings are kind of off. I got to spend time with my lovely husband at home and connect with him. Um, but if you have ideas, I would love to hear it. What times work for you? I know this is kind of an evergreen thing. The live videos come up, but I love interaction. I want to hear from you guys. What are your frustrations? What are you working on? I want to get into a greater dialogue, um, with what's going on. Um, I can't help you unless I really know. For now, I'm spitballing, giving you my own experiences and so forth. Um, anyway, so it's running on 20 minutes. I don't want to make these too long. Um, I really hope you guys have a good week. I'm going to try and come on maybe tomorrow, maybe first thing in the morning. I'm trying to get up earlier and see the sunrise. That's my beautiful, quiet time to just connect with myself before I'm needed elsewhere. Um, that really helps ground me a lot. Um, keep calmer throughout the day when everyone's kind of pulling on me and needing me and so forth. Um, 
And uh, anyway, so look for me maybe about seven o'clock tomorrow if my girls are still sleeping. Uh, anyway, have a lovely week. Please be mindful and care for yourself, care for your friends and family. Do something for yourself today and um, give yourself a pat on the back for just doing an amazing job with yourself and getting you to the next moment. Um, you guys are doing great. So I'm just sending warm fuzzies and kudos to you. I think we don't hear it enough. We always hear kind of the negative from the world of you're not doing this right and so forth. Um, but anyway, I just want to say, I don't know you, but good job. You're here right now doing an amazing job with however you're doing it in whatever ways you are. So get enough sleep, stay hydrated, stay sane, do something fun for yourself, maybe get some flowers and stick it in a vase, whatever it is. Okay. Um, so have a lovely day. I will try for tomorrow morning um, and so forth. So have a great day. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.